Hello and welcome. You're listening to the Movement for a Female-Led Society. I am T. Erica Patterson, and I'm the founder of our new Female-Led Society. Make sure you check out femaleledsociety.org. Subscribe, add your name to our list of supporters, and read more about what we are initiating as we move into this new era in our society. You can purchase the manifesto. A manifesto for a female-led society is available on Amazon. Learn more about my plan for creating world peace by empowering women. Yes, our female-led society is a society that embraces and prefers the leadership of women. It's that simple. It doesn't mean that all women are all leaders that men can't lead. It just means we embrace and prefer the leadership of women who are bound by feminine principles. So men can also be leaders in our female-led society if they agree to our 15 principles of feminine power, if they live by them, because they're great leadership um, guidelines. And you can learn about the 15 principles of feminine power at femaleledsociety.org. Make sure you subscribe and you'll receive those in an email to give you some more information. But on this podcast, we're talking about All of, you know, we're exploring different opinions and attitudes towards women in our society right now. And we're talking about different um, things that are happening that will be remedied by establishing a female-led society. So today I saw an interesting article. It, It had made me smile and laugh and feel a variety of different emotions all at once. It was called, Why Are Single Women Still Mistaken for Prostitutes? I was like, okay. So if in case you don't know, if you haven't taken the time to research me, you can always look me up at terica.com. That's T-E hyphen E-R-I-K-A.com. That is my online portfolio. It has all this information about me, my background, things I did when I was growing up. It has all of my professional cre- creative um, samples so you can look and see what kind of woman I am. But if you haven't taken time to, to read through that, you may not know that I'm a single woman. I am a single black woman living in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I am almost 40 years old. I'll just go ahead and claim it. I'm almost 40 years old. I have two sons, 16 and 18. Um, I've never been married because I had them so young while I was in undergrad. And um, I just enjoy my solitary life. Sometimes I do think about having a partner. But the, that's always like dismissed whenever I just go out on a date. I'm like, oh, now I see why I enjoy being single. And I do enjoy being single and, you know, until those times where I wish I had somebody to talk to and things like that. But for the most part, I just enjoy my life. This weekend, actually, I went out. Um, I went out by myself. I took a trip to Miami. I'm in Fort Lauderdale. So Miami is like 30 miles away, you know, from where I live. Took a trip down to Miami to see a comedy show. And I went by myself and I went early enough where I could go out to have dinner beforehand, have some drinks with the crowd of people in Miami, listen to some Latin music and then going over to the show and enjoy myself. And then I took the train back to um, Fort Lauderdale. So this whole trip, I was by myself Uh, when I sat at the bar to to drink. I didn't think twice about it. So that's why (laughs) it's so interesting for me to read this article. Why are single women still mistaken for prostitutes? Because it talks about how a woman was asked to move away from the bar. They came to her and said, you can't sit at this bar when she went out to have dinner. And they told her she had to sit at the table because women who sit at bars are assumed to be prostitutes. Really? <laughs> like, you can't sit at a bar without being a prostitute? I was in, I was like, what? I, I never thought about that. I sit at bars all the time when I'm ordering my drinks. That's a good place to watch people. Sometimes men hit on me, but I expect that because I'm alone or, or hopefully that they think I'm attractive, not that they think I'm a prostitute. I am asked if I'm a prostitute in, in, in my neighborhood, though. Because I, my neighborhood is kind of sketchy, you know, to be honest with you. And I'll be approached by a man and he'll say, are you dating or how much? And that has happened to me here. And when I first moved to Los Angeles to my neighborhood and they didn't know who I was. So they, they were like, who is this new woman walking around our neighborhood all the time? And I love taking walks. I go for walks like three times a day. So they, they were assuming even when I was wearing boots and a big old coat that I was a prostitute, but I wasn't. 
Of course I wasn't. But I see nothing wrong with sex work. I think sex work sex workers need to be protected. I think it needs to be seen as a legitimate career and there needs to be a legitimate place that you can go to if you would like to engage with women who are offering sex services. I don't think there's anything wrong with with them doing that. That's their body, that's their choice, and I don't think women should be shamed for it. As far as us um men assuming that we're sex workers because we're single what is going on with that why this is this like the middle east why we're we're not obligated to have company or be accompanied by a man here in in the u.s so why is it that if we are unaccompanied why does that mean that we're waiting for to be used by a man All single women are not single because they're waiting for a man. Does that make sense? I'm not out and about because I'm looking for someone or my only reason for being out is is to entertain or be a sexual service to a man. That's why I find this offensive. I'm out and about because I think I should enjoy an, an evening of laughter. Of drinks, of of being outside in the in the in the sun and the fun. It is annoying when men automatically assume that you are a sex worker because you're walking by yourself or you're doing something by yourself. And from what I've read, women in Nigeria are having a hard time renting places if they're single. Because people the the landlords assume if you're single, you're a sex worker. So here we are being defined by our relationship status again, where being with the man gives us value. And that's one of the things that bothered me. So when I was crafting the manifesto for a female led society and I was deciding what should our principles be, our guidelines be, what should we teach women that will give us a different result than what we have here in our society today? That's something I explicitly expressed. I wrote that. Women are not defined by their relationships to men. Single women have value. Women without children have value. And it's not inherently expected that any woman would be married or have children. That's not a mandatory expectation or a life milestone that women should gauge their success by. Because I do believe in our society, we 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 feel as though we have to marry we have to have children like it's expected of us as women it's our role in in life and once again i truly believe that gender roles create havoc it creates discord and mental mental um stress because everyone is their own person and has their own specific desire so laying out what you should do because you have a specific genital is only hurtful to us it's only hurtful to us. So just because I'm a, a a woman doesn't mean I shouldn't be able to go out and have dinner and not be approached for prostitution or assumed by men that I am a prostitute because I'm unaccompanied. Because it's a good chance that I will never have a a, a partner, a male partner in my life. And it shouldn't be automatically assume that something's wrong with me because of that and I shouldn't automatically assume that something's wrong with me no woman should automatically assume that something's wrong with her because she does not have a male partner I think that the longer a woman goes without a male partner there may be a reason maybe she's had some traumatic experiences in her past and she doesn't want one or maybe her options that she's been presented with are not up to her standards and she does not feel like Settling. Our worth is not gauged by having a man on our arm, having a man to have dinner with. And from what I hear, going to dinner alone or going to shows alone like I did, most people can't do. Not most women, most people can't do. Most people can't go out and have a good time by themselves. They feel ashamed. They will feel stressed out. (laughs) They will feel judged. And they just wouldn't have a good time. But I prefer doing things 
alone because it's so much fun. I get to go on my own schedule. I get to go sit where I want to sit. I sit by the water if I want, sit at the bar if I want. It's time to go after one drink or it's time to go after three. I really like saying, hey, I'm ready to leave. Let me go to the bathroom. Whatever it is I want to do, I can do. And it feels great not to be under the influence or have to go along with someone else's schedule or wait for someone else. To say, yes, I would like to do that. Imagine I bought, saw the, the concert, the comedy show, bought a ticket. I didn't have to wait for anyone else to say they agree to go with me. I like that power. I like the power of choosing which restaurant I want to go to, sitting out, having a drink, enjoying the scenery, enjoying the music. Me going out as a single woman is about me. It's not about me sitting there waiting for some man or to meet some man. And I shouldn't be judged because I'm a single woman. I shouldn't be judged as something as though something is wrong with me because I haven't partnered with one of these men <laughs> that I've encountered. Because I'd rather stay by myself than be unhappy, especially when I'm already happy by myself. So why are single women still mistaken for prostitutes? Because men automatically assume that if we don't have a man by our side, that we're unprotected. And that we're there for their use. We exist for their use. To be their wives or to be their sexual toys. But in our new female-led society, it's not going to be like that, number one. Because we're going to have a safe space for female sex workers. And male sex workers, if that's what you want to do, too. I think that would be great, to be honest with you. There's a place right down the street from my house. And it's a bathhouse or something like that for men to just go and have sex with each other. And I'm like, where is that for women? Sometimes you just need to be touched and, you know, enjoy that sexual pleasure. But we don't do that because it's we're seen as we have all these sexual hangups. But in our new female led society, men are never going to approach a woman and ask her, are you here for my sexual use on the street, randomly on the street? That's crazy to me. If you want a prostitute for your sexual use, if you want to exchange money for sexual services, then there will be a specific place for you to go to. A man will never propose a sexual tryst with a woman ever in our new female-led society because women will lead the conversations about sex. And a man is to never bring it up unless she asks him, is this something you're interested in with me? So our female-led society is going to eliminate so many of our social ills. And I am very excited to initiate it. I'm very excited to lead this movement. Um, I'm not certain how long it's going to take for it to take off, but I'm here. I'm alive. And as long as I'm alive, this is my next goal to create world peace through the empowerment of women, to establish a society where women are empowered. And the reason that I'm doing this is because I believe that when we empower women, when we embrace women, when we give women the opportunity to shine and we're supportive of women, everyone, our, the progress of our humanity is going to move forward a lot faster. So far, we've all been pushed back. We've been pulled back. We've had blocks held in front of us. And that's like half of our population, which is crazy to me because if we're stopping half our population from being brilliant in the world... How are we expected to progress as a human race? Imagine if we didn't stop us. Imagine if we didn't stand in the way of women exhibiting their amazing intelligence. I think our number one priority should be social progress and social innovation. Not ensuring that men stay on top and speak and continue to be leaders. So we have to hold back half the population from expressing their greatness. I can't wait to see what happens. So you're listening to the movement for a female led society. I am T. Erica Patterson, the founder of our new female led society. Please visit female led society dot org to learn more. Pleasure support, offer a donation and offer to become a leader of our female led society. I can't wait to work with you. I'll talk to you guys soon.